Hey everybody, David here. Hey, with Becker Art. <laughs> um, well, welcome, 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 welcome. And so today we're we'll be doing a painting, a paint along of a cardinal bird. And it's supposed to be some kind of meaning to when you're um, something with the cardinal, which I, nobody in class knew what that was, but I think it's something to do with folks that passed away or something. But anyways, we're gonna be doing the bird. I didn't do a great job with it this afternoon, so um, I think I, I have a couple things I wanted to tell you about and how we're going to do it better. All right, and so let's just go right away to, actually, let's go see what our beer is today. So our beer today is a is a Wolf um, Three Sheeps Brewing from Sheboygan, Wisconsin, Imperial Stout Aged in Bourbon Barrels. Wolf and from Sheboygan, Illinois, uh, Wisconsin. <laughs> Oh, this is pretty hard to see. So let's see what this tastes like. Oh, look at this really dark. A dark beer. A back. Oh, that's very dark. <laughs> so the wolf from Three Sheeps Brewing in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Wow, that's strong. Wow, is that strong. That's probably the strongest beer I've ever had. <laughs> it tastes like liquor. Um, I'm going to give that, um, it's not my favorite kind of taste, but I'm going to give it a 9.5 because it's still, but if you like a strong beer, and it's in a Guinness glass too, um, this is very strong. What, boy, I wonder what the alcohol percentage is on this thing. It tastes like it's um, 12. <laughs> it doesn't say. Anyways, cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. 9.5 um, paintbrushes. Wow, that is strong. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Hoping I paint this. Oh, I still have a ladder back here. <laughs> oh, anyways, okay, let's go right down to our website. And um, hey, Sue, Marsha, Amy, Barbara, Sherry, Dave, anybody else who's on there, thanks for coming by. And so here we're going to be doing this is where you find up all my stuff, all the things that's happening, my website. And I just updated um, all the places I'm going to be and the places I'm doing demonstrations. So right over here, you can see um, I'm doing a bunch of new ones. Uh, one in, in Minnesota in Anuka, Minnesota, um, Bagley, which is near um, Bemidji, uh, Minnesota, doing Dillman's, a uh, bunch in May um, in, in Wisconsin, a lot in Wisconsin and Minnesota this year. And then so we're going to be going to Quincy, Illinois and Morris, Illinois, which I don't have down yet. That's after that. But anyways, that's where you get all the stuff where I'm at. I just got back from, like you noticed, I got back from, from Canuga, which is absolutely wonderful. Here's where you find my supplies. I'll be talking about Canuga in a little bit. And then um, all the supplies there, I've just put up there for a little bit so you can see what we're using. Now value study. This is um, what I did this afternoon wasn't quite what I intended. Um, I didn't have a good value study and I didn't think about the value study, I guess. Um, but this is what I want to do this afternoon or this evening. I mean, I want to kind of make the bird I know is bright red and we had a little hard time with this part right here of the bird, the light part, because my teacher always told me that when you're working something that doesn't really, um, is not really true to what the, like this bird is red, all red. And here we have a really bright light on it, making it this kind of really light. And so it just, it looks okay in a photograph, but then when you do it in the scene, in the painting, sometimes it, it looks weird and it did look weird. And so I'm gonna paint the whole bird red, but I'm gonna make this part, I didn't make, make this part dark enough or make a different um, light, a different kind of um, red so that this part will be a little bit darker. I like the fact that this will be dark against the light. And sometimes you can use things like red, a bright color, to make things come front of a light color. And so that is like putting a dark with a bright color to make your eye look at it. One thing I didn't do was all these darks in the bottom here, which I'm gonna try to do this time. And I'll just show you in a second what I did. And so we're gonna, this is kind of our value pattern. And I'm gonna really work on getting these um, branches in the background to look very, very soft. I want them to be nothing but soft, soft edges, wet into wet. I'm gonna show you a different way I did it. That's one thing that did work in class today. So let me just show you what I did in class. So see, I got the background okay and I got the soft edges of the branches, but I want you guys to get the soft edges of the branches. Um, the bird, see I left this not so light there. Um, it just looked weird because I didn't have these darks down here and see, I didn't get it dark enough. And so 
Um, yeah, I know that the female bird. I, this I'm thinking this is a male bird, um, but maybe that was maybe it was a female bird because I know the female bird is not all red and has a little bit of beige in it, or not beige, but uh, kind of like a non-red, um, almost kind of brownish. Um, the the female bird, uh, but I'm gonna make it a male bird. And um, something I learned a lot when I was in Canuga was about finishing your painting. And I, I it was really um, I met. Um, Dylan Pierce, you ever look up his stuff, Dylan Pierce, he's a watercolorist, um, amazing watercolorist, and I was so happy to meet him, and I, I talked to him a little bit, and we were talking, and I just, um, I'm so enthralled with his paintings, with how how he finishes, it, and it's so fine details, and it's something I, I, I've got to start doing into my paintings, and I was talking, talking to my class about that this, this evening, af afternoon, about how I want to make the bird a little bit more detailed this time. You know, I always get to an hour and then I rush it. I rush it, and, but I never really finish them to a, like a fine point where I'm kind of kind of drawing like this. And I know a couple of you do your work a little bit finer detailed. And I forget the name. Um, somebody just posted today on, on the Facebook page. Really beautiful, fine work with really a lot of details. And I don't tend to get that, even in my studio work, I don't get to go as far detailed as I should. I want to get a little bit more detailed, kind of like a Mary White and a Dylan Pierce. If you look at Dylan Pierce's stuff, um, high key, very high key, but, and a lot of soft edges, which I really am doing this tonight. We're going to be doing soft edges back here, but this down here has to be darker because I have to follow the value study because value study is still important. So let's get this value study to where it's dark and the top of his head is going to be dark and this will be light. And it could be a light like that, but yellow just doesn't fit in this. And if you look at the picture, the photograph, this is like kind of more of a yellow. So it's like the sun is hitting this side really bright. And you can try it. I, you know, if you want a more of a female bird where it's not all totally red, I want to make it the um, totally red bird. And I'm just going to make that a little bit lighter. And I'm going to make this darker so that it follows my value study. And I really should put the value study up here instead of the bird, but maybe I'll put both. Let me just do this for a second. Let me just take this and I'm gonna put this up here too. Just so that I remind you, see here, this is what the value study is. Just to remind you that, or myself, that I gotta follow this value pattern. I'm not gonna be using black like the like the value pattern. I just need to make this part darker right there on the head of the bird. And the, and the body down here on the back could be, you know, on his stomach in the back there. And the feathers can be lighter, but I still want to make them red. And so there'd be a lighter red. All right. Let me just put these out of here for a second so you can see the color one. And so it's not bad, but I didn't get dark enough down here to do the value pattern. So the only thing that's dark in here is the branches and the bird, basically. Being all red, it still kind of seems like it's a dark because it's darker than the background or a different color from the background. All right. So let's just get going. Um, any questions, just blurt them out or write them out. And I may be having some new people from Canuga join me um, to our thing here. Because every time I do a workshop, I, we get some new people watching. So if anybody new, just you can go ahead and um, chat and introduce yourself and um, ask questions. All right. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do the background. And I'm going to do the blues. And I'm going to show you how to do these soft edges without doing them at the first time. So I'm... Um, I, I kind of did that in class and it worked out really well. I didn't do them right away because it's such a hard thing to go around this bird because I can't go into the bird with the blue because the red. And so I didn't, I was quite, a, I was quite um, kind of like didn't know where I should go with this one because do I do the light blue first, but do I go through the, I can't, you know, normally you can go through the bird, but I just went around them. And so that's the thing I'm going to do tonight. I'm just going to wet this and I'm just going to do a light without the branches. I'm going to show you how to do the branches because I missed the opportunity um, at this afternoon. And so I tried something and it worked really, really well. I sprayed it afterwards. And so I can get some of the branches in there at first, but it's hard enough to get the brightness of the sky nice and bright at first. So that's what I'm going to do first is try to get the brightness of the sky. I'm going to use this nice light, light, light blue. I'm just going to go in here and I'm not going to try to put the branches in right off, off the bat. I and mean, I'm going to show you why, because it just was so nice to do it afterwards when first I'm going to get this really beautiful sky. I want to get there first. So I'm going to try to get a really beautiful sky. Just make it all nice and light and bright. I'm going to go around the bird because the bird is going to be red, bright red. And this combination of red 
uh, and the blue really works well. I mean, it really works. Well. I'm not, I should have more of a purple blue, like what it is in the photo. This is more of a warm blue, not so much a purple blue, but um, it's more, I, I would think, more of a um, ultramarine, and I didn't put enough ultramarine in there, but I want to keep it lighter, so let's see. I think so far it's okay, though. And I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to try to put the branches in there because I, I could. Maybe I'll try one or two to show you how to do it while it's right now. But I found a great way of doing it right afterwards. And it was like, like I was too late. But what, what I, was happening is I did this top part. And then as I'm coming down, I forgot I was talking about Kanuga. And then when I got down here, I was doing that real um, fast. And it got to a point where I'm like, I totally missed a chance because it has to be really wet. And you have to use a thick amount of pigment to get the branches. So then I found a different way of doing it, though, because afterwards I let it dry. I came back in and I wet it, and I'll show you how to do that because that worked out really well. I really liked how it turned out. Like you could, let's say, I want to put a couple branches in there of a like purple nature. Let's see, um, I'm gonna make them kind of gray. So I'll take like purple, I'll take like a dark purple, and then make sure that your brush is not. I'm just gonna do one like I'm gonna do. Oh, that's that's Cronacrum Gold. I just found out too that they no longer are going to be making Cronacrum Gold. Like that's going to be off the market. You're not going to be able to get Cronacrum Gold anymore um, because they don't have that pigment anymore. The auto industry kind of used it up, I guess. Um, and so hopefully they'll make another color kind of like Cronacrum Gold. But um, I just noticed that because um, I ordered some of that from Cheap Joe's when I was there in Canuga, and they, that's what they said. They said it's no longer being made. Like none of the companies can find that color or something. I hear that the other companies are going to make something that's like it, but Cronacrum Gold is going away. So let's see if I can do a branch here. Let me see. I'm going to take a, a gray or like a lavender. Let's take a lavender. And um, the blue, what do you make it to make it dark and take away your water. And if I want to make a couple of branches in here, I can do it now. I'm just going to show you how to do it now, but I'm also going to show, show you how to do it when you do it um, with when it's dry and you waited too late. Hey, Gigi from St. Augustine. Hey, Kathy, Amy, Tina, Anne, Dawn. A little bit of um, orange into this violet to make it more um, duller, a duller color. I'm just going to do some branches here that are going to be... See, you can do them while it's wet. And you just make a, a nice a nice amount of pigment, you know, and so that doesn't bleed too far. And I'm going to do one across like it is in the, in the picture. But I'm going to show you how to do a couple of them later on when it's dry, and which I had done because I it was by mistake. By, and I went to the top of the branch first because that was a good place to stop where I don't have to... I can... Because... This afternoon I wet it all, and by the time I got up there, it was still it was dry. And so, watch what you're doing, you know, and think think how long you can take before you can have to stop and before it starts getting damp. Because if it's damp, you can't go in there with this. It has to be wet. It has to be nice and wet. And you notice I'm using my big brush, and I should probably be using my round brush to make it look more branch-like. But okay, so that's the top part, and I'm gonna let that dry. It's not the exact blue I wanted. Um, you to find the better blue. I use more of a, I would say a warm blue instead of a cool, crisp blue. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Marsha. Yeah, I think you can try to order Q Gold now, but I think um, they're already, like Cheap Joe already ran out of it because um, I was asking them if they could get some <laughs> um, for the class because I was still using I mean, I use, I use Cronacrum Gold for all my greens. And so, boy, if they don't have Cronacrum Gold anymore, I'm going to be in big trouble for my greens. I'm, I have to figure out what to use for my greens. I'll probably have to start buying greens, and I have a hard time buying. I don't know which greens to buy, but maybe we'll worry about that later. I'm still going to ask Holbein about that and see what that's all about and if they're going to make something that's going to be color-like, like Cronacrum Gold. So if you just came in late, I just was telling everybody that Cronacrum Gold is going away. <laughs> like, no more. It's so weird. And so here I'm just going through now. Now, down here, I want to make this dark, like the back, you know, like the like the value study. Remember I was saying that the value study 
is more like this. The, um, it's like that, like on the side here. And so that I want to make that light to dark. And down here, I want to make it dark. Not black, but dark. And so um, just so that I can have that look of light and dark. So what I do down here, I can make it kind of a green. Let's make it kind of a green with Cornacidum gold. I'm going to boy, I'm going to be using that left. See how it makes a nice green? <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to see what I do once I don't have Cornacidum gold anymore and how to make my greens. I've always used that just to make my greens. I have to use like a yellow ochre or something, but it's just not. It's going to be as bright and as, as bright as the go around this tail this tail is going to be light I'm not worried so much about the branches I'm going to put them in dark and so if they have a light edge I'm going to either have to mascoid it or I'm just going to wipe it out and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to wipe it out I'm just going to make this dark it's wet and so I'm going to go in there with nice dark colors and like I said, dark colors, not black, not like the like the value study. It doesn't have to be black, but it has to be darker than the top part. So that's all I'm worried about is making this darker. Oh yeah, the legs. Thank you. Thank you. I will get that. <laughs> I will get between the legs here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When you're talking and painting at the same time, sometimes you forget stuff. And now I did a little blob right there. That'll be part of the branch. We'll make that part of the branch. Now, this this big branch down here, I'm not going to do the color I need yet there. I'm just going to do the background behind it because this will look like it's part of the, the background. And then I'll put a dark on top of that. And this actually is weird because everything's lit from the bottom on this picture. So the sun must be low and coming across the side here to make that look couple of little things here yeah I'm really into gonna try to do a little bit more details at the end because I'm very fast painter but I tend to be impatient and don't do kind of really fine details and I have a hard time doing that but I think there's a certain point you do need to get some details in your work like when I look at like uh, Dylan Pierce or Mary White's work when you're in your studio it, there's a time and place where you have to get some really nice nice looking um, detail, especially in a center of interest. It really helps out your center of interest. And that's something I feel I miss a lot when I'm doing my my paintings, my even my studio paintings. Now, of course, I can sometimes do it with the, with the demonstrations because I've only got an hour, but I can still um, try to do it later after the, after the demonstration, just get a little bit de more detailed. And so I'm putting a little bit of orange in here. And again, I'm not worried, worried so much about showing that branch down there so it's so it stands out like a sore thumb. This is just got to be dark. It's about the bird. And I can put some red, knowing that the bird is going to be red, I can put some little red in there that gets reflected color. And I can do that. And then get some really nice darks in here, some cracking gold. Ooh, I got to watch out. Don't want to use it all. I remember them talking about that a long time ago, but I never thought it would come to a reality that they wouldn't have that color anymore. Like, how can they not have a color? But I guess it's like um, they just don't have that pigment. Um, and I'm sure they're good, though they can make something close to it. I'm just wondering now, i got to ask them if they're going to be making, like, the Quinecrodome, other colors that are Quinecrodome. I'm just wondering if those colors, like, the, I know that Daniel Smith makes a Quinecrodome, um, what is it? A burnt orange. That's just amazing. Um, and Holbein makes a bunch of colors too, not named Cronecrodome that are very bright. So I'm just wondering if it's just the Cronecrodome gold or if they're going to do other ones. So I'm going to be asking that to Holbein very shortly. And so I'm going to make this not so quite as white. All right, so there is, um, as soon as this dries, I'm gonna show you how to go back into an area. And this is 300 pound, but it's bowing a little bit. Cheers, guys. This is very strong. <laughs> wow, that is strong. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like I'm drinking pure alcohol. <laughs> it's still not bad. Quinn Rust, um, love the burnt orange. Yeah, burnt orange is a nice color. 
it's kind of like what um, Holbein has is light red. This color right here is light red, which is covered up with all kinds of stuff. But that's usually my my go to for my like um, burnt orange. See, it's like a burnt orange. Um, it's kind of nice. It's called light red by Holbein. If you add a little bit of orange to it too, it, it, you can make these colors, you know, too. All right, so um, let's do the bird now, and I can show you how to do the. Let's see, is it? All right, so what I did is I used my uh, mister. And so let's say you forgot, you didn't get the branches from the get-go and you felt like, oh shoot, I didn't get it. And I, um, or if you don't like you doing it, why you get the big, nice, clean wash. You can take this mister and mist over it. I'm gonna cover my bird a little bit because I don't have to wait for that to dry. So let me just take a towel. A towel and go over, kind of put it by my, where my bird is. I'm gonna mist the background. And so I'm just going to mist it. I'm just going to mist it over. And you don't have to put much. Uh, don't soak it. Just enough to make the surface wet. And so now you have a wet, even surface um, with the mister. And so now I'm just going to take my round brush and do some branches again. Where's my, where's my small round? Do I not have a small round? Oops, right now. Sorry, I thought I had an old... Oh, here's a round. All right, so my round. Now it's wet, it's damp, and so I'll take like a gray color and not that much water, and I'll just go in here, maybe this branch right here, and see how it's, it's soft-edged? It's just a different way of getting this to be um, soft after the fact, after you already did it. And just make sure you always have enough thick pigment so you can go back in and grab a, the look of a branches that are soft edged. I really like that look of soft edges. And I really want you to try to do these branches in the background, not hard edged and not even light, hard edged light. Try to make them out of focus. I'm really trying to get you guys to learn how to do out of focus stuff. It's really cool looking when you can do it. Here, I'm just going to go over that little piece of dark I had there. So, now that was a little bit too wet, and so i got to hurry up and put a little bit thicker pigment in there. I'll take a little bit of purple and this, this burnt orange here. I think maybe make this one a little bit warmer. I'll make this branch a little bit warmer. And see, it's, a, it's just a damp surface now, and by going in, I can just make these edges nice and damp, nice and soft-edged. And it really isn't hard, you know, just practice it on a sheet of paper. Wet the paper and see if you can make branches before you do this on a, on a painting. Because it works. It works really well. It works really nicely and really well. And take one coming out of his head here. And then it's a, I could, and I wonder if I sprayed it, if it would make it even, no, I don't want to spray because then it's going to mist it out completely. But maybe that's what you want. Maybe in the background here, I can spray it, a slight mist. I'm going to do it right now. I'm just going to mist it. And you notice how I'm not pointing at it like this. I'm, I'm taking it from a distance and let it bleed on it. Let it just like go down on it. See, it's like it's just from a distance and it will get in there and I'll wet it. And it'll give it a nice soft edge to it because water softens edges. Remember, I always talk about that. Soften the edges with water. You don't have to um, do it on your own. You just let the watercolor do your edges soft. No, I don't think I have too many branches. <laughs> I'm having branches all over the place now. And maybe do some of the same color as the sky so they look like they're way in a distance. Like they're way in a distance and maybe this one's gonna be bigger this one's gonna be like a big branch see this one would be more like it's farther away and they're all this direction oh what did i do oh well let's do one going this way have fun with it don't forget to paint this in try nickel nickel azo yellow hmm i have to try that one. I've never tried that color. All right, so that's that's the that's the way to get your soft edges. Now, I want you to try soft edges. Try um, wetting it and wetting in, um, working in a wet area, a wet wash. 
So now with the bird, his his, I want to go with my lights of the bird first because I always go light to dark, right? And here, this got kind of dark with no lights in there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to rub out too. I'll rub out later. So let's go right, right away with the bird, and so I'm just gonna do the light parts of the bird first, and that's basically his whole body. And so I'm just gonna wet his body. And I'm gonna try to use pure, pure colors for I want it to be really bright. Like right here, it's gonna be light, but I want it to be pure, bright color. And I'm wetting with my small round brush and, and again, soft edges, cause feathers are soft. And so I don't wanna go in there with hard. So I'm wetting the, all of the surface and I wanna get the color really fresh. So this is a time where you can clean your pig, where you can clean your, um, clean up your paint a little bit. So I just dab in here like this, get rid of the, the dirtiness on top of it. Try to pick up some pure pigment. Um, this is Scarlet Lake and this is Brilliant Orange and they make a super bright red, super, super bright. Um, I want it to be lighter, but as I go up to his head here, I'm gonna want it dark, right? For my, my value study said that up there it's darker. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch it and make it to alizarin. When I was in, in teaching in Canuga, um, one of the ladies used a lot of my alizarin crimson or I, I have crimson lake. And I realized that I don't use Crimson Lake very much. This color right here, it's Crimson Lake. It's like a lizard crimson. And man, she did a whole background with that. Oh, I loved it. I'm like, why am I not using that enough? I don't rarely use a lizard crimson. So I'm gonna start using a little bit more lizard crimson in my work. And so tonight I'm gonna try to do it with the head, make the head dark up there, but with the lizard crimson and Scarlet Lake. This is Crimson Lake and Scarlet Lake. Cause I don't have, um, I don't have a lizard in crimson. I have Scarlet Lake. I mean, Crimson Lake. I'm just going to give him the little crown here. Make it dark. I'm going to make it dark and I'm going to wet it as I go along. This is all going to be dark. This is going to be black right here. So I don't have to actually even worry about that. But I'm just going to go around it. I probably should go in there, but that's okay. Sometimes you can go in or you go around. It doesn't matter. If you can't handle going right to there, just go right in there. And you do dark right on top of that. And so that's not even dark enough. So now let's take a little bit of purple, put that into the alizarin. I, Cause I want to make this really dark up here. Just want to make his head nice and dark on the top. Cause I really like that look of, in the value study. Remember it's really dark and as it goes down, it's light to dark. And this is light here with dark behind it. And that's gonna be dark. And I got a little watermark here so I can do something about it now, or I'll just leave it alone and wash it. Oh, what I can do is I can just wet it a little bit more right here. Just wet it. And his chest up here going to be a little bit darker too. So let's get a little bit more pigment. Pure pigment. That sometimes, a lot of times you don't use pure pigment because it's like, how often can you use like pure red? But when an object is red and it is that color, just use it, the color. You don't have to mix it. It's always the best if you want pure color to make it rich and really colorful and so then his wings i'm going to try to make a little bit darker on the top here and then it gets lighter as it goes back and then later on when i was talking about details i am actually going to do some of the wings to feathers separately because this is my center of interest so let's make him a little bit more interesting and more detailed because he is a center of interest and like i said that's something i've learned that i want to kind of teach a little bit more is that finish up your work a little bit finer detailed than i normally have you do it just it looks good i mean if you look at paintings that are winning awards some of them are pretty detailed not that you're going to be going hyper realist no no you don't have to do that but you want it to look really real i want you to have, do paintings that have a certain point to them where they do look tight and and really clean and and nice it's just something you can do that i don't do enough of i, I just started taking out my old paintings that i saw and i noticed that a lot of them are not finished yet they should be a little bit more finished a little bit more work on them to make them a little bit more, the center of interest pop out a little bit more. I think that's because I, you know, I've been, for my whole life, I've been working for an agency and you always had to do things fast. And so I never slowed down and trying to finish things up more detailed because it always had to be done fast and fast is more important than finished, detailed. And so we're going to change that a little bit. I, I want to get a little bit more detail with my details. Like I said, more like a Mary White or a Dylan Pierce. 
and that's not to say that I'm going to be doing photorealism. It's just to say that I'm going to make a little bit more effort in making my center of interest, like a bird like this, be a little bit tighter, just slightly tighter and cleaner. If not, not tighter, maybe even cleaner, like not so just you're done, you know? And, and so that's what I've been doing for a long, long time. I'll try to change it off a little bit. So there we have now we've got a little bit of red into the tail. He's in a thicket, so lots of branches is fine. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's what I planned. I haven't planned it all along. <laughs> He's hiding. Those those birds, um, my mom has a bird feeder in the winter, and man, they've got thousands of birds, and and boy, they stick out so much, especially when there's snow. They These cardinals just stick out so vibrant, so vibrant. And of course, the females don't, but even they have a little bit of red, though. Maybe this is a female. I didn't even think about that. Maybe that's why it's so bright right there. All right, so there's the bird, the basics of the bird. And um, let me put the beak in right away. It's a little bit more orange. Um, the beak seems a little bit more orange and really bright on the bottom. Like everything's lit up from the bottom on this picture. I'm going to do a little bit of orange on there. A little bit of brilliant orange and scarlet lake for the red on top and i'll put the black in a little bit when i get my details i'll make that beak nice and sharp and pointy there i have really sharp pointy beaks almost like i said everything up here is a triangle the beak is kind of a triangle the crown is a triangle the face the black part of the face is a triangle and the eye is always right in this corner this upper corner right here it's right there it's just black eye and you just put a little highlight there, and that's enough to show, like, the bird. All right, let's go to the, the branches now. Now we're at to our darks, our dark details, because we got our big lights, our big mediums and darks, our big mediums and darks, and now our detailed darks. And so that means the branches. And so the branches, I'm going to... And branches, it was funny, because branches, everybody thinks are brown. There actually aren't really that many branches out there that are brown. Like, this one is kind of green with moss and stuff on it, and so it's, like, greenish grays a lot of grays a lot of violets a lot of violets and branches so and i'm going to put a lot of color into it i'm just going to go across and i just want to make sure that it's dark and so maybe a little bit of the red that i have in my palette kind of brownish you can start out with browns and again this part is the top part is darker which is kind of weird that's lit up from the bottom but i'm just going to go with that and there's his foot i go around his foot and once it's wet you know me always once it's wet it becomes a wet into wet wash and so don't be afraid of putting other colors in there especially since you want some of him reflecting into the branch how about some of this red right into the branch just put it in there while it's wet and let it float in there it just has to be dark and hard edge on the outside and don't make it nice straight across you know wiggle a little bit so if you have a little bit of a, a tremor in your hand that's fine because you can just open down and make it not perfectly straight the branch is not perfectly straight. There's a lot of gnarlies on it. If that's, if that's a word, gnarly. <laughs> and so we're going to go through here. Yeah, I was really impressed. I, I must say, I was really impressed with Dylan Pierce. And I was talking to him a while. And I was just, I kept on praising his work. Because it's just, I love how high key. I mean, high key paintings where you only, you know, you do most of it really light and the rest is the darks are left for the the center of interest and he's a master at it i mean just a, simply a master but his drawing and look at his drawing skills are very very good he definitely knows how to draw and um it's just amazing now it takes him a lot longer to do his paintings i think he said like 40 hours on some of them and and that's that's what got, got me thinking about boy you know i really just rush him that way at the end I just rush my paintings and so I'm going to work a little bit slower and try to work on my details a little bit more at the end and try to get them a little bit more detailed. I just think it's a good thing to have both uh, um, looseness and, and tightness to it. So now we're going a little bit. See now I want them hard edge so that these are soft edge so they stay back right. They stay way back there and I, I, I'm not sure if you noticed but I changed all the branches around especially even from this this afternoon because this was getting crazy it just to me it didn't have a good feel as much i didn't like going over right here with the branch either so i brought it down by his tail and i brought this branch i brought a branch above and so it's not crossing his body 
you know, I just didn't feel that those branches. And so you can do that too. You can paint it the way it is. That's fine. I just look at the branches and I'm thinking, you know, I, I don't want to go right there, right? Right. Whereas this is kind of a nice part right there. And so I thought, I'm not going to cover that up this time. I'm going to go down and make the branches different. This got all confusing. And in the picture too, there's a foreshortening branch coming at you. And that was hard to show. And so I just made it a little bit different. I just changed my drawing. I just drew, drew them up the way I wanted them to be. I just go down this way. And um, there's no branches right here in the picture. But I decided I want a branch right here. And they'll go behind this one. And I want them hard edged too. I don't want them soft edged. I want them hard edged. I want them to come forward. And I want to be colorful in some of them. And same thing was right here. I put a branch that comes down. I still want a lot of branches. I just don't like the way they placed them. How Mother Nature placed them <laughs> for me in, my, in the photography. And you're so allowed to do that. You know, if you feel like you want to do it a little bit different and make it better for your composition and your eye to movement and stuff, and you feel, you know, do it, do it, do it, do it. Here, this is kind of a more blue I'm using at first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some other colors in there while it's wet. I always do it after it's, it's wet. Then I kind of go take colors that are around it, like this orange is definitely going to be in there, right? And this red, it's going to be right there. It's right next to that bird. So it's going to reflect that into the branch a little bit. Then I'll get a really dark purple maybe in there to maybe really make it dark. Really make it dark, this dark side of the branch. And I'm going to show you later, um, I didn't do the light parts. Because I'm going to paint them in with opaque. I'm going to paint them in with gouache. Um, just put them in there. And like I left some of this white. But I can also go back in with um, gouache. and with um, Or even white. And just put it in there. Light. So again, here's some, some new branches that I just made up. And some of these should be like the color back here. Or what I have back there. So that was kind of bluish. And so like it's going back. And disappearing into the background. Because you can do that too. It's no problem. Um, like this branch can go here and then maybe you can get a little bit darker. Like it's coming towards us. And maybe um, even have a branch that is hard edged going up and out this way too. Maybe I'll have one going like this way and it'll just be right there. A lot of my students at, the, at in my weekly classes are are kind of doing a lot of bird paintings. That's the kind I'm doing this one too, is they have a show coming up in this Movolo bog. There's a bog by us that does all the art shows and um, you have to do a bird from the area. And so I, all of my students, a lot of my students are gonna get into the show. And so they're all doing all doing all kinds of bird pictures. And it's kind of fun, it, it's neat. And I remember I remember a couple of weeks ago in my in my newsletter, there was a, I had a, um, artist, uh, artist of the week that did birds and had really the branches were like that. And that's where I got that from is the lady did a lot of branches that were out of focus. And that's really cool. So look that up on my archives. You can always go back into my newsletter in the archives. Even on my website, there's an archive button where you go back in archived all my art, all my, um, all my newsletters are archived. And so you can go back to any one of them. And the link is right where you sign up for my newsletter in my, on my website. So here we're getting this dark. Bring some of this down here. This, I'm gonna just kind of put a, maybe mess it up a little bit. It seems a little bit too nice. I'm gonna take my bigger brush and just kind of go in there, soften some edges. Make it a little bit darker and just soften some edges. Let it bleed together. Maybe put some hard edge branches. Even wipe out. See, I wiped out a little bit right here. Yeah, I'll be wiping out. I'm gonna show you how to just, look how easy it is to wipe out on this paper, Stonehenge. Look at that, I just did one little, I wet it a little bit and look at that, how I just wipe things out. I'm doing it with a big brush. I'll do it with a smaller brush later on to show you how you can make these the branches really light by just rubbing out a little bit. Now you can't do that with some papers because it absorbs too much. Like um, arch is a little bit hard to do this then because it absorbs way too much. All right, so let's go in and find detail of the bird now. And I'm gonna make this part light. I'm just gonna, see I take my brush, I wet it and I just kind of, 
I soak up the um, the paint with um, a dry brush. See, I'm just going to go in there and just soaking it up and pulling it out with a dry brush, um, a thirsty brush, I should say. I wet it first, and then I take a thirsty brush, which means a dry brush, and it absorbs back into the brush. And I'll get some light edges. You can just first draw it with water, and then let it sit a little bit, and then just pull it out. See, I'm just going to pull it out like that. Same thing over here. Let's just... This is already wet, so I can easily pull out branches here. You can also scrape branches out, too. I'm just kind of making, you know, this is, like as you said, this is, um, you know, a lot of branches, a thicket. And so it's very much thinking that male cardinal isn't from Illinois. <laughs> So now I'm taking just solid black, I'm taking you um, black, peach black. I'm just going to go in here and just get the dark part of the bird now. Just going to go in there, and I'm going to. I don't need to have soft edges per se here right now. I can soften it a little bit, like with little brush strokes. And it's okay to be a little bit detailed and go real fine. And I notice that I kind of need to do this details. The the finest brush I have is this, you know, number eight round and then my um, rigger and the rigger is almost too floppy for doing details so i'm going to look into getting some more um holbein gold brushes that are um, a little bit a little bit more detailed a little bit smaller they make them all i mean I, and i've been trying to get the whole set not with my name on it but just to have it so a little bit of dark right here and Nice and detailed. See how nice? I'll put a little mark there for the eye. This could be an eye right there. And I'll have a little bit of a highlight there later. A little bit of an eye. Now the bird himself, the legs are um, really, boy, they got claws on them. Unbelievable. When you look at the picture close, that claw is like black. And it just wraps around that, around that tree, a branch, I mean. And it's just really sharp. So I'm going to do that right here, just really fine. And see how it's not even that fine because I'm going fast. But um, you would take time then. You know, when you're doing this, if you've got more time than I do, spend some time and make the detail count. Make it really detailed. Go in, look at the picture, and try to get every little detail you see in the picture in your center of interest. Like, this is part of my center of interest. So don't be afraid of getting dark there and detailed. I mean... Take another swig of this really <laughs> heavy duty with liquor. <gasps> wow, it is strong. <laughs> if you like a strong beer, boy, um, if that is really strong. I'm made in bourbon barrels, aged. You can tell it's aged. It's very, if you're into dark, dark wolf, three sheeps brewing in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. All right, so what do I have to do here? Let's make the bird a little bit more detailed now. And go in there. Here's a nice dark by his wings. Nice thing is I got time. Look at how much I have time. So when you have time, it's nice to just slow down, get in there, make them look great. And so... We're going to put the little feathers. And so for the feathers, I'm not doing this wet in the wet. I want a hard edge. I'm going to do a little wisping motion. I'm going to take um, Scarlet Lake by itself and make it nice and bright. And I'll maybe put in a little bit of this right here, a little bit of water. But then watch this. I'm just going to wisp it across. Not This is dry paper, so I'm doing like each feather just to make it a little bit detailed. And then there's long lines here. This would be maybe good with the um, rigger brush. There's really fine lines here, and so let's do that. Let's do some fine lines with the rigger and just go in there, make a nice, make them wet enough so they can float out right out of the brush. Now I have to do one brush stroke at a time. Boom, boom. Look at how nice that looks with nice, nice details. You know, I was talking um, about the class and then my newsletter about breaking the rules and 
I really learned a lot about that in my class in Canuga because a couple ladies and one lady in particular who um, was so thankful that I told her that she could trace the picture on because she almost and she's always been very um, kind of like almost about to quit because she never, none of her drawings were ever really good and her painting weren't very good and so you know she wasn't getting better and better and and um, so I let her trace the picture and she did some really nice paintings and I also let her use white because it was a gouache it was a gouache class and watercolor and she just was I guess the teachers that she used to have would always not let her do anything like that um, it was very um, discouraging of her to do certain things and I, I find that a teacher I shouldn't be discouraging you to do you should be doing everything and you should be happy and you should be having fun because if you're not I mean yeah sometimes it can be hard but I think a teacher should be dis uh, not discouraging. They should be encouraging. I should be encouraging you to try and do things. And, you know, and if you break some rules, that's okay. You know, that's fine. It's all the outcome. It's how you get, you know. And if you are not encouraged and you get discouraged and you quit, that's not a very good teacher, <laughs> I think. You should be able to just really, really want to do it and have fun doing it too. So now she's um, tracing some, some of her paintings so that she gets a good drawing. I told her you still, you know, you still, it's good to learn how to just draw and keep on doing that. But, you know, these are just, these are just tools, the tools like the Da Vinci Eye. I showed them how to use Da Vinci Eye. Um, you know, hey, these are just tools to make your paintings better. And if you can use them, go ahead. It's the outcome. It's the final thing that is more important. And try different things too. Try different she tried um, gouache and she was very happy with it and thought, wow, I can actually make a mistake and I can like, I can enhance with a dark, you know, I can put like white, like I'm gonna, in a little bit, I'm going to put white over this and it'll look neat. You know, it's not going to, it's going to look better because I'm enhancing with the gouache. I'm not making a worse painting because of the gouache and I'm not fixing a mistake either. I think a lot of schools make you feel like you're, when you make a mistake, you use white paint and so they don't want that. Um, that's like I think they don't want you to use white paint. They want you to use the white of the paper, which is all good. You know, I I still I agree with that. But you know, don't discourage a student um, from not doing it and breaking the rules. Break the rules after you get your fundamentals, and you should definitely learn the fundamentals. But after that, you know, don't be afraid to break some rules and try different things. And if they fail, that's fine. Keep on going. Don't get discouraged. I hate it when. Um, um, I would, I would feel really bad if I'm discouraging people from painting. You know, that's not anything I want to ever want to do to my students. I want them to feel like they should be able to do anything and everything. And Rebecca, that's you if you're, if you're online here. <laughs> Say hello. And she, um, she learned about my classes on, online here. And she took me there in um, Canuga. And she was so happy that she now can do those things. <laughs> All right. So final thing is the fine, fine details. I'll put a little highlight in the eye. A little highlight right here in the eye. It's a little bit too high up. Just a little bit of dark in there. And then we're going to... Um, a little bit more red in the belly right here. A little bit brighter. So I'm going to take pure pigment. Pure pigment. I don't want any. I don't want anything. And sometimes you may have to put out new pigment for that. If you, if you, if you're all your pigment is really kind of um, destroyed by other colors, then just put out other um, pigment. Here I'm doing this in dry because I want to get some of the edges of of the feathers. And so I'm just going to leave it dry and just go back and forth and get that feather look. I'm leaving the foot white because it actually in the photograph it is light and so I'm going to keep it light on one side. I'll put a, a really dark dark right here. Take a little bit of black and just kind of put the one edge dark. Look how detailed I made this one. I don't think I've ever worked this detailed before. <laughs> That's a good thing. And again, like I said, it's a good thing. And so then right here, this feather's coming back here. I'm going to do this really nice and tight underneath this feathers right here. So this is nice and dark. 
So let's again do some of this, look at the branches and see if I can't um, put some highlights in some spots. Like here I left the white of the paper, but where I didn't leave the white of the paper, I can just go in with a, look at this brush. This is a um, striping brush, or I don't know what they call these. Um, some people call it um, dragon tongue and stripers, and I'm not sure. It's a long, huge, long brush, but I think it's not bad for doing like some thick branches and doing some really, or thin branches, I mean, and then just kind of you know, flick it around and just make odd brushes, branches. I probably also makes neat feathers. But see how it makes, makes nice lines and maybe the bark on the, on the tree. You can use some really dark colors for the bark. Maybe make some, oops. You guys still with me? <laughs> Ask questions. Don't be afraid of asking questions. And let's see. Okay, let's put in, like I said, I'm going to do some white. I'm going to rinse my brush. So I'm wetting the white a little bit. And I don't have my gouache out. This is, this is titanium white. And it's um, not gouache, it's watercolor white. Uh, but it's pretty much opaque, so it's kind of like, exactly like gouache. Gouache happens to be, um, and for Holbein, has been ground finer. It's like, and it's, so it's very concentrated. And I'm going to put a little bit of warmth in this white, I think. Let me put a little orange in there. So it's not just pure white. And I'm just going to put a highlight on top of the, some of the branches here. Like I said, I could have done this with masking fluid, but instead I thought I'm just going to paint it. And um, some of these branches are going to go, just going to be white. I'm just going to come down here and make them white. And this is um, opaque. This is not. This is what if you're um, a purist, a natural, um, traditional watercolorist, you would not do this. This is um, breaking the rules. Then um, I'm breaking the rules by using gouache now. Um, instead of using the masking fluid and getting the white of the paper, because that's the traditional way of doing it. Um, but this is not wrong. There's nothing wrong with this. If you want to try it and just, um, it's the outcome. Remember I said, it's the outcome. It's what you ever wanted to be. It doesn't have to be traditional. It's whatever the ending is. Your ending result of your painting is more important than anything. How it looks and do you like it? And it, it, when I say you like it, that's all that matters. You like it. Do you like it? Have fun with it. If you like it, that's good. Hello from Norway, Marianne. And oh, I have a little heart there. I can't read that. Why is that heart there? From Illinois and bump into your site. Oh, well, thanks for stopping by. Hello from Norway. And, uh, and Illinois and said oh, here we go see I have these nice little branches and putting some light branches in with it with gouache and now make sure that your branches are um, not all going like the same direction and um, don't put like two instead put three make some don't make them all the same size either make some a little bit thinner some a little bit thicker so they have variety you really need to have variety in your work. And so that, um, now I'm going to take on these branches. I'm going to put a little bit, I'm going to blend that into it. Make a light side of the branch. And again, this is a little bit more detail. And I'm so into this right now um, that I, I, I love it. I, I, and I don't mind doing gouache. Um, I really find, especially when I'm taking... Um, the wax and waxing it, I kind of want it to look a little bit more um, worked at and a little bit thicker paint. And again, that's up to you. You can make it look all transparent and that's all That's all good. And a matter of fact, if you're taking some of these, um, if you're doing some of these competitions, you cannot put um, white in your in your work. Like the transparent walk outside, you cannot put white into your work. So check your prospectus and make sure that you can. Um, like right now, this is all opaque. This is this. I'm basically doing opaque. 
And that's it's because I'm only doing it because I am want you to realize that breaking rules is not a bad thing. You can do it anything, anything you want. And even if I want to put feathers in here that are a little bit um, opaque, I'm going to put some lavender petals in here or um, feathers. There's some, there's some opaque. That's opaque right on top of there. Just do it. Like like Nike, just do it. I'm going to put some of these feathers up here. Um, I think I'm getting pretty close. Did anybody see something that I'm missing? Look at these nice, um, when you take white and it's wet and it just spatters out. I love that. I love that look. So maybe a few more branches in this direction. There's no branches going over here. So maybe a few there. And I think I'm almost done guys. I was going to say about anything I think yeah if you ever get a chance next year they're going to have it again it's always the last week in March um, Canuga where I went and taught next year I'm not teaching but I will go there again next year and probably take a class uh, um, I'm open you know I know there's a few artists that are, are, are going to be there I think Ron Stoke is going to be there next year a couple other artists that I forgot their names but um, they're going to have like 10 more artists and um, should be fun again. If you ever get a chance, it's a really fun week. It's four, four days. Actually, you get there Sunday and um, and then from there on, you get the rest of four days of pure art and speaking art with your friends and meet new people. Just a super fun time. And go as a teacher. Or I went as a teacher this year, but next year I'm going as an artist. All right, I think that's about it. Unless you guys see something that I need to do. But see how the background now out of focus, how that looks. Now this branch is kind of, I'm, I'm not sure about it. That was a good branch, but you know, I'm going to leave it. And again, I could also spray it. I could take a, I could take a mister over it and do another branch up there too. So it's up to you how you do that. You can do it while the first wash. I did some of these first wash. Some second wash. Amy was at Canuga and she said it was great. It's very great. And if you were there and you voted for me to win the Civic Award, the Civic Community Award, thank you so much. That was so nice of you. I definitely was not expecting that. That was a very nice um, honor. I was very honored. I probably was really red when I was up on stage too. <laughs> All right, I think that's it guys. So let me show you the before and after. Um, so this afternoon, and actually, see, I worked a little bit more tight when it came to the actual bird compared to this afternoon. I kind of rushed it. So I kind of rushed it a little bit, and um, it's just not as, and also got the values. Remember the values I wanted dark down here to light? This values are all over, right? There's no big value pattern. This is more of a value pattern. We got dark, and then the bird is dark too, but it's light over here, bright, bright and light. And I would have liked you got a little bit brighter blue, but it's, I think it's okay. All right, I think that's it. Any questions? Let me see if there's any more last questions. Um, no, it's not acrylic that I paint with. I paint with watercolor. This is all watercolor. Um, gouache, the, the gouache that I use is also watercolor. It's just, um, actually this was not gouache at all. This is. Um, my white, I used white and mixed it in with some of the watercolor. So it's all watercolor right now. And this one's not bad. It's just a little bit looser, but it doesn't have the value pattern as this one does. And so it's just different. Again, you know, um, use your style and try different things. Try different papers. Try different um, mediums. You could do this in all gouache or try it in acrylic and it's all good. You'd still follow the same thing when it came to how you put it down, you know, how the values go and stuff like that. So that's all good. All right. So until Sunday, um, I'm not sure what I'm painting Sunday, but I usually do a Sunday, um, not a paint along. I just, I'm either outside painting and I don't think it's gonna be nice enough to paint yet. I mean, I can't believe about two weeks ago it was like 60 degrees and now we had snow before I left for Canuga. We had six inches of snow 
and these last two days has been raining and snowing so you never know <laughs> so anyways i'll see you hopefully on sunday and if not sunday next thursday all right thanks again for everybody for coming by here it's so wonderful that you guys are coming by and if you do paint it please post it on my facebook page group the becker art group and we'll love to see it all right till next time bye bye